So this video is all about Vitalet basics for beginners. Welcome back, my name is Marco. I'm a property investor, developer, and mentor. Today we're talking about buy to let basics, and this is specifically made for beginners to property. So in this video, we'll go from start to finish on the buy to let property process. So hopefully by the end of this video, you have a good idea of what it entails to purchase a buy to let property and start your property portfolio journey. So we need to start by defining what a buy to let is. Very simple. A buy to let is where we're buying a property and letting it out or renting it out. It's as easy as that. And we could be buying this property with cash or we could be buying it with a mortgage. And I'll come on to talk about finance and leverage very shortly. Now, before I do so, why invest in buy to let property? I'm gonna give you three reasons on why I think buy to let property is a great strategy to undergo. First of all, buy to let property is a relatively passive way of earning a living. And making money. So there are other more active type of property strategies that require more time and then more hassle and maybe more stress. But buy to let property is a relatively passive way of making money in property. You know, you don't have to be working nine to five if you're undergoing a buy to let strategy. And maybe you're only working half a day a week within your portfolio to make that happen. Number two, buy to let property is seen as lower risk than other types of property strategies. So for example, you could be under taking more advanced property strategies, maybe something to do with bridging finance or maybe houses of multiple occupation. And they're typically seen as higher risk when compared with buy to let properties. And lastly is the power of leverage and how we can essentially put down only a 25% deposit to purchase a buy to let property, but we can benefit from 100% of the capital appreciation. So that's a really important thing to understand. And I'm gonna come on very shortly to explain this in a bit more detail. So so finance, let's talk about leverage, let's talk about finance and mortgages, which is really so important to the buy to let property process. So typically most buy to let properties are acquired with a mortgage and this is normally a 75% loan to value mortgage. Well, what is that Marco? What's a loan to value? Well, very simply, it's the loan or mortgage we're asking for up here compared to the value of the property, which is normally above that. So let's say, make the maths really simple, we've agreed to purchase a property for £100,000. So £100,000 purchase price. But we want a mortgage of £75,000, which is a 75% loan to the value of the property or the purchase price, say. Now, another really important mortgage variable we have to discuss is the type of mortgage. And most buy-to-let property investors acquire buy-to-let property using an interest-only mortgage. And this is where we only pay back the interest. We don't pay back the capital, so the, the, the sum that we've borrowed in the first instance all we're doing is serving the interest on this loan. The nice thing about an interest only mortgage is it maximizes your cash flow because your monthly mortgage cost is less than a full capital repayment mortgage because we're just paying back the interest, which is less than paying back the interest and the initial loan. But now you have the question, well, Marco, how do I ever pay back the, the loan? How do I pay back the mortgage I took out in the first instance to purchase this property? Well, that's for another video. Very briefly, you can refinance or sell the property to pay back the original mortgage. However, I've got a really good video that details refinancing and I strongly suggest that you consider watching this video. Here's a picture of the thumbnail and this will give you a bit of an idea on how you can exit and how you can pay back the original mortgage. So that's more or less it when it comes to the finances. So normally, just to recap, we're buying with an interest only mortgage around a 75% loan to value. Nice and simple, right? So let's move on to the types of property. You know, what property type is a buy to let property. Well, it could be a bog standard introductory one or two bed terraced property, maybe in the Midlands or in the north of the UK. And it's fair to say that that type of property is probably, you know, at least over 50% of the types of buy to let properties that investors opt for. But you could have other types of property too. So maybe you could have a three bed semi-detached property that you're renting out to a family. Maybe you have a one or two 
bedroom flats, it could be in the city centre that you're letting to professionals working in the city. And there are so many different types of buy-to-let property. But really, I'd say the majority of people investing in buy-to-let property are looking at kind of a one, two bed, terraced house, something along those lines. And the reason that is, is because those types of properties tend to give you a nice mix between a nice healthy yield, so a nice healthy rental income, but also a good capital appreciation. So we've identified what type of property we could be purchasing. And maybe we've gone to right move and Zoopla and found something that we think could work. Well, what do we do next? It's really important to work out the figures for this potential property purchase. So, you know, I'd go over the figures before you even book a viewing because there's no point booking a viewing, you know, traveling to the property, viewing the property if your figures are miles out and it's never going to work. So this property needs to tick the box for you and for your strategy. And really important, you know, what is your expectation on a level of return that you are satisfied with? So make sure you go through the figures, make sure this property more or less ticks the box. Don't get me wrong, if you're very close to making this deal happen and it requires a bit of negotiation on the asking price, then I think it's worth calling the agent, viewing the property and maybe submitting a lower offer. But if you're miles apart, don't bother wasting any more of your time. Move on to the next property opportunity and you'll eventually make one work. So I'm going to make another video shortly that really goes into the figures in a lot of detail. But in this introductory basics for beginners video, I'm only going to talk about a couple key areas. So one really important area we need to think about is the return on investment or more specifically the return on capital employed. And this is essentially it measures the cash we have in the deal and the profit we're making from the cash we've got invested in this particular property. Now within your figures you want to account for capital appreciation. What is capital appreciation? Well capital appreciation is the increase of the value of that property over time. So in the UK historically property prices increase over the long term over the 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And again, it's very difficult to put a figure on this, but we have to put some figure on it and have a forecast and have a bit of a guess. It's really important not to ignore the capital appreciation element of the property investment process. So, you know, if you're ignoring capital appreciation, all of a sudden your returns look lower and are a true representation of what you could be achieving by investing in property. And by investing in areas with strong fundamentals, what I mean by this is low crime, good schools, great employers, good transport links, a high percentage of owner occupiers living in this area. If it passes these five tests, and it's likely to be an area that has good, solid capital appreciation over the long term. So let's park the figures aside and move on to the legal process and the due diligence. So you want a solicitor and a conveyancer that is able to add value and identify potential issues of owning this property years down the line. Really important. So you want to be aware of any potential issues that may come up during your ownership of this property. But there's other things we need to account for as well in the due diligence process. And really, this some some of this should be done prior to even engaging and starting the legal process. But simple things like reviewing the energy performance certificate of the property, where does it lie, how efficient is the property, and what would it cost to improve the efficiency going forward. So we also need to have a think about stress testing a property. What is the potential rent this property could be generating? So what we want to be doing is we want to be working out the numbers before we even submit our mortgage application to make sure that this property has a very good chance of getting that mortgage application approved. And the last point I want to talk about on the due diligence front here, and there's many more, but I am conscious of time in this video, is have a look at what this property is actually worth. And what you'll find is there's often a misalignment between the asking price and the value of a property. The asking price is normally above the value of a property. So you know, have a look at recent sold prices in that area, and you'll be able to come to some type of conclusion whether or not the property is worth around the asking price. And if you're in any doubt, you can refer to the e EPC because the EPC tells you the square footage of that property. You can then multiply the square footage by the average residential value in that area, again to generate some form of rough valuation on the property. That's a quick little tip for you there. So let's fast forward, we've completed on the property, congratulations. So what do you do next in terms of managing the property? Well, you have two options. You can manage it yourself or you can give it to a managing agent. And there's pros and cons to each, but essentially if you're giving it to a managing agent, you can expect to be charged around 10 to 12 percent plus VAT of the rent for an agent to manage and maintain this property going forward. So let's come all the way back to the very beginning of this video and the figures. So if you are planning on giving this buy to let property to an agent to manage, it's really important you incorporate their say 12 percent plus VAT figures in 
into this and it's really important that this deal still stacks even when you've included this management fee. Okay, so let's move on to now the areas to invest in. Now, as some of you know, I'm based in Leeds in West Yorkshire and I focus in North and West Yorkshire and they're my target areas. But that being said, Yorkshire is a great place to invest in. So is Greater Manchester and so is Liverpool. I've had really good success kind of along this corridor, along the M62 and across into Merseyside. So I'm a big believer that there are certain pockets of the North that are great because they give you a nice blend between a really healthy yield with a good net cash rental income, but also a solid capital appreciation over the long term. Okay, so next step. So Marco, I want to buy my first buy to let property what should I do? What are the next steps? Well, first of all, I recommend speaking to an accountant because you need to understand how to best structure these property acquisitions. Because if you set up the structure incorrectly, you're going to be paying far, far more in tax. And I've got a video that details should you buy property in your personal name or limited company. I'll link to it in the description. And here's a picture of the thumbnail so you can find it. Um, but it's well worth watching. But essentially speak to your accountant. And if you don't have an accountant, head to my website, www ms7.uk and I can put you in touch with the accountant that I know, use, like and trust and he will be able to advise on the best structure for you to be purchasing properties. And once you've got your structure correctly set up and implemented, then you can start your property search. So once you've figured out the right structure for you, whether that be a personal name or limited company, then it's time to start looking for property to purchase. And again, there's many different ways how to do this. In fact, I've got a really good video that details how to find properties at a very good price points. Again, I'll link to it in the description. Here's a picture of the thumbnail. And if you're really struggling on the buy select process and maybe just taking that first step and you want someone that's able to give you a second opinion on your property deals, head to my website, ms7.uk and book a call with me. I'm very passionate about helping people get into buy to let property and scale a buy to let portfolio from say one or two units to 10 or 20 homes plus within years and not decades. So that's that's it for buy to let basics for beginners. Please do consider subscribing to the channel. We've got really good buy to let content coming out over the coming weeks. And for those of you that have subscribed, thank you. It does mean a lot to me. You'll know every Tuesday and Thursday, I release a full length video at two o'clock. So stay tuned for that. I wish you all the very best in your property investing day. Take care. Goodbye.